Okay, this is going to be really cool and really simple. This is Tyson, my good friend Tyson Carlson. And he's out on the west coast, this is Oregon, right after a real serious, you know, s storm surge. Then he comes out and looks at all this stuff. Well, what he's pointing at right there is a tendon enthesis anchor, which is right below this red layer. And then it turns into a black layer. Well, here's what I have right here, which is identical to what he has there. Only it's a little bit tiny bit smaller. Now, what is he looking at right there? He's looking at one of these tendon balls. One of these balls like that anchored right into the wall and then into the flesh below. And here's they, they, they slide on each other. There's just a, a ton of them in your body. And he's going to show a bunch of them. Anyway, they slide back and forth so that your body can slide back and forth and still come back to where that anchor is anchored at. And these little tendons, these little white spots are, are what he's showing up here. That's what there is. That's what those are the white spots. <laughs> and this here is the, I call it the uh, rind, which surrounds, you see it? We'll look at that in the microscope. It's very cool stuff. And, uh, and this is like a slippery layer. They call it slurpy. Small, leucine rich proteins. And that's what allows these things to slide over each other. Anyway, we're going to take a little closer look at all this stuff. But Tyson, where do you see this? He's got a site that is absolutely stunning. And there is some new research that we're going to be doing. I just got off the phone with him. Anyway, let me show you what my specimen is. It's identical to that. And this, this is brand new research, too. They don't even realize this stuff was in the human body. Let me show you something. And I'll show you this exact layer that this is it's the same. All right, so don't forget now, this is Tyson's spot out here. Look at this very carefully. You see how many little tiny layers there are? You can't see them with the, you know, until you really start to look close. All right, you really got to pay attention to the details. All right, now then you see that red layer? It runs all the way across the whole coast. And below that is this black layer. And there's some red mixed in here and there. And then there's these tendon balls. Now, I'm now starting to think that might be a white blood cell. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. There is tendon balls all over. But this particular layer... I think it's still a tendon ball, but this is what I want to do is to work with Tyson to look at what these things are made of because you sh I got a, I probably got a hundred different shots of tendon balls and I guess we should go through them because there's a whole v variety of shapes and sizes and internal structures. We'll, uh, we'll do that. All right, so before we do that, that's what Tyson's looking at. This is what I'm looking at here in my shop. This is the one I showed you that I was going to put in the microscope, and it is in the microscope right now. Now, I am going to wet this, and you'll see, but it has, this is the outside skin. You see, that's the outside skin and all those little balls. Those are the, those are the balls and straps. And then it comes down underneath to that red layer, just like Tyson's, and then the black layer underneath with all those little, little holes in them, which is the interstitium. That's, the, that's what it is. Now I'm going to put a little water on here, because that brings out the, the highlights. All right, so get ready. All right, this is exactly what you're seeing Tyson showing. These balls, you see these balls, these big ones? And then you get little or tinier ones as you go down. Let me show you the anatomical, which they just finally discovered this. This is something pretty brand new. All right, you see this? Meet your interstitium, a newfound organ. This is 2018. And I've been looking at this stuff for 10 years. This is the outside layer of your skin. Or it could be the outside layer of an organ. Or it could be the outside layer of a muscle. Or it could be the outside layer of a tendon. Every single body part in you is coated with a membrane. Even bones. Bones are coated with membranes. 
tendons are coated with membranes. It separates you from the rest of your body. That's what a membrane does. Now, what else does it do? It has to protect itself. So this tissue here is, is dispensable. We don't really care about this. This is like the skin on your body. It erodes all day long. It's just falling off you. But down here is a different story. Down here is what the, you don't want to get invaded. It's called cancer. All right? If they can get through here and break through this wall and continue to evade, invade, you're in trouble. Now, this is what Tyson was showing, that red layer. And I'll show you my. And these are all these balls. They never knew these balls were in here. They thought it was a flat sheet because they are, they, any time they ever saw it, it was in slides. I've been looking at this stuff since 2012, working with an autats, autopsy anatomist to understand this stuff. And they never realized, they just said they had discovered this organ, fluid-filled spaces, didn't know it was here. Never seen before. And then it talks about the reason, and here it is right here, it says, it's everywhere. It's everywhere it is connective tissue all over the body, including below the skin, the lining and the dig digestive tract, the lungs, the urinary system, the muscles. A new study detailing the findings published March 27th by um, Dr. Tice. Now, they always thought it says the new finding reveals that rather than a wall, the tissue is more like an open, fluid-filled highway. And that's where all your immune system works. I've been showing it's very important, and this is all thick collagen bundles. All right, I'm going to see if I can get a catalase reaction, which catalase is the enzyme that is in your blood and in this layer, I believe. Now, let's see if we can get get it to react. It should bubble all up if it's, if it's going to react. Yep, see it bubbling up in this. Watch. It, it takes a minute or two to get going, especially when they've been sitting around a long time. Let me get a, well, you can see it fuzzing like crazy. Look at it. Let me lock this in position so you can see the actual catalase working in the arteries. You see it? Let me come right down on top of it. We put a lot. It, it's it's very viable the catalase because it's it stopped it right away. It wiped out all that hydrogen peroxide almost instantly. So it's very strong, reactive. I'm going to put some more on there and see if we can see the same thing happen again. Let me back this up a little higher so we can get a shot at. Alright, now I might have to move this around a little bit, but I'll try not to be too hard on the thing. Hold on, here we go. Alright, here goes the catalase. I mean the uh, hydrogen peroxide. Now, look at it. Look at it bubbling up. You see how it reacted? That? That's instantaneous. And it's breaking down all those excess oxygens. Hydrogen peroxide has an excess oxygen, H2O2 instead of H2O. Look at that sucker bubble. Look at it go. I think you can see that. Well, I certainly can. That indicates to me, and to anybody that understands catalase, that's an enzyme reaction. And it is aggressive, very, very strong. You see? 
Look at a bubble. I mean, that's just attacking the hell out of these hydrogen peroxide molecules, liberating extra oxygens. That's a very, very, very strong reaction. That is as strong as blood coming out of your arm. I'm telling you, this is just phenomenal. I've been watching this. It's been almost five minutes. It's still bubbling up like crazy. Look at that. There is so much viable bodily fluids in here. I can't, I, it's, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm going to put some more on there just for the hell of it. You watch this. It'll continue to react. It's, at some point, you think it's going to not have any left. But watch that. Look at that stuff. It's erupting like a volcano. Look at it. They're saying, all right, send the troops. Send the troops. They're coming back again. <laughs> Get the troops up there. That's that exact layer. That is the exact layer. Isn't this, a, this is just stuns me. Watch, it's going to be this layer, and then probably we could see it coming down here, too. You see, it's, it's the separation between the boundary coming down and the basement and the inside good stuff. You don't want that good stuff getting attacked. All right, so here we are back to Tyson, and he's pointing out what we were thinking was a tendon ball. Now, above that is that interstitium layer, and down here is the interstitium layer. This is, I believe, the fluid-filled highway. This red layer goes all the way down, you can see. Above that is uh, basically skin. You see these layers here? There is literally hundreds and hundreds of layers there that you don't see because you really can't see them. There's just so many of them. But let me show you what skin does like look like. And I believe that is skin. I believe this is the layer underneath. And this whole layer under here is what's called now the interstitium. And they just realized this it even existed just recently. But I'm now starting to think that might be a red blood cell. Now... Tyson's pointing it out, and he's calling it a tendon ball, and that's what we suspected it was, and it still might be, because I'm going to show you a bunch of things, but I'm starting to think, based on the structure and the construction, it might even be a, a white blood cell. The tendon ball broke open right there. See it? All right, you see all of that little cracking inside there, all those little chambers? Those are like tiny little chambers. And again, this is all the skin. You see those layers? And then you have this one separation layer, which is the, I believe, that layer that protects you. See what's in the center of it? You don't see a crab or a clam or none of that stuff, a nucleus. You see this? There's a ton of ch chambers in there. Now, why are because they in there? that's biological. It is biological. He's 100% right. That is biological. He's 100% right. Here's another one there. Right there. They're all over. There's another one here. All right, now, you see all these little chambers? And you see how it's sort of built right into these? These are, this is some kind of intercellular, you know, intermembrane, you know, biology. All that black stuff is from some form of tissue. And normally when you see black, it's associated to veins. Down here, you see how red that is? That's associated to an artery. Now, this may have some member, you know, a, a vein area here or something. I don't, I'm not sure what. But I'm starting to think that this is a white blood cell, and here's why. Now, here's why I think this may be a white blood cell. Because of, first of all, all of that you know, chambers. I believe they're chambers. Now, they attach in a whole different way than the tendons. T 
tendons have a strap, a very distinct strap running off them that I will show you anatomically and, and, t and Tyson has a bunch of that stuff too. He's got everything in his, in his, uh, his area here. Now what, what I want him to look at is these little white jobbers that are literally inside this black layer and that black layer is tissue. So what are these little clams doing in there if this was a body tissue? How did they get in there? Or are they clams? What are they? I want to know what they are first of all. But there, I've seen them in a lot of his his stuff, and I I want to see him dig them out of there, and we can get them tested. See them all over the place. What's going on? There? I think those were like like bacteria in the creature's body, and now they've turned into you know they've adapted and turned into like seashells. <laughs> and here's another one. See how this is coming in this way? That's not a strap. Same thing here. Not a strap. And you can see that this is where its central location is. Now let's see what a white blood cell looks like. Okay, we know we're right at that layer. The skin was up here. All those little... When it's laying flat and it's dead for a bazillion years, they just turn into those little very even flat slaps up, up, up at the top. And then you get to that layer, and then you get to that red layer which I believe just below that separation zone is where those tendon balls were. Or are they these, which are the white blood cells? This is the zone that should have all your white blood cells. Well, not all of them, but they're going to be concentrated on that wall. That's your barrier against invasion. Then you turn into other little blood cell, uh, tendon balls. Let me show you what it looks like in another anatomical shot. And don't forget, this is, again, just recently they found this. 2018, they realized, yeah, this is part of the body. This is a whole organ system. Newfound organ. See here, once again, here's Tyson's. I'm not sure whether it's a, a tendon anchor or whether it's the white blood cell. But it's right below the skin layer and this layer of, of that red investment that is separates you from the rest of the world. That's the fluid filled highway. Those are normally invested with these, if this is a white blood cell, these white blood cells. And I believe that's what that is because it's too fractured. They, these, these become too fractured to do a real good anchor job in the body and I don't see the anchors. Let me show you the ones with the anchors. Just so you remember, this is that skin layer, then the red layer, and then all the balls underneath. And I believe these are some of the white blood cells somewhere in this area. And they turn perfectly round. Normally they're sort of like ovalish looking. Alright, this is Tyson again. And normally the balls have a very distinct strap. You see that little strap running down into there? This white looking chalk basically is his skin this is in your fine skin and that, that also has to stretch and move and all that and come back and that's where that interstitium sits and I can show you some other which is even bigger than this okay there it is right there that's the interstitium all those are the little balls that I'm showing you and Tyson's showing and there's the bigger ones could be the white blood cells and this is of course, that's in the microscopic shots. But this is over in Hunstanton Beach, or Hunstanton Cliffs or whatever, over in the United Kingdom. And it's the exact same thing. You can even see that very red layer right through there. This is the white chalky layer, which is the skin, literally the skin, and or mucosa, whatever you want to call it. And right below it is the interstitium, and these balls have eroded away. And in the fine skin, that's what they are. There's so many of them, they're everywhere. You see it? They're everywhere. And that's what it is. It's just what it is. I, guess, I didn't make it up. That's the mucosa or the skin or whatever. It's the same as that mucosa or skin, whatever it is. It's a membrane or a membrane, whatever. And then... Um, and, and these are Moki marbles, they call them. They're out in Utah. And below them is the basement layer. 
of skin, basically. These aren't concretions. They didn't just turn into balls for nothing. These are biological. Okay, this is why there's so many tendon balls all over the place. Because not only is it under your skin, which they never knew about, which is the small ones, they're in all of your anchors that anchor inside of you in here. They're all over the place. Everywhere. Every joint has them. Every bone to bone has them. Everywhere you want to anchor something to pull against, you have to have these, these little balls. And they are different in different places in your body. And now I also think that the uh, white blood cell was what we were looking at before. See, it could be this one right here because it does have this, fat, this um, crystallized center. They're showing it that way. These are the tendon anthesis, and then they have, of course, the tendon strap comes out. And they change as they grow, and cells migrate to here and there. And then they create this cellular, or this um, crystal-looking core. See, these are tendon balls, and they're all over the place. And, and they have that little stalk sticking out of them. And a couple, like, blood supply artery and vein. All right, this is a tendon anchor. Now, we saw the stalk coming out of the other one. That's where it would have anchored here. This has like little Russian dolls inside there, one inside of the other, like an eggshell. Now, this one here has this outside. I believe this is like flint and chert. And then it has a center core. I don't know exactly what that is, but it, I always thought it was a tendon ball. And this is where you can see the insides are broken up. Now, are those tendon balls or are they white blood cells? I don't know. They look. You see these little blocks inside? They have. Those are little cavities. And that's what I see inside of white blood cells. I just don't know anymore. I, I got to be honest with you. The sizes of these things were just absolutely stunning. They made plates out of them, cut them across and made plates out of them. Uh, there's one that has the blockiness to it. This is the same sort of stuff where they have, I don't know exactly what that is, whether that's just, I, I originally I thought all the tendon balls were the same. Then I kind of started seeing all kind of different structures. Then I started seeing ones that looked like they were almost flexible. And that really threw me for a, for a loop. And I think these may be white blood cells with all their little pockets inside. That's what I'm thinking now. These are the little tendon anchors that are all um, the little um, interstitium balls. These are little ones. And they're just solid little black ones. These are big ones, but they're also, I believe, interstitium balls. You see how they have a little spot on the top? And everything's just eroded away. And they're the tough stuff. This is a van in a house. Um, what do we got here? All right, this, that is a ball, and this is skin. Believe it or not, I believe this was skin. When you see that white powdery stuff like that, normally that's like kale and clays and skin. These are, the, these are just strictly the um, interstitium balls, very fine. And you see how this is all muddy clay over here? That's where it eroded away. That's just your skin. Skin erodes, turns to mud. Skin is literally mud. This is a pretty good sized one. And what was ever in the center drained out like sand. Very interesting stuff. You were showing a giant built Stonehenge or did something out there. Somebody just probably thought that up, but I can tell you what Stonehenge is a monument to a giant. That is the foot of a giant. And it's called the heel stone. <laughs> it's amazing. You see the tips of these toes? Each one of these is a toe. You see the little dot and a dot and a little thing going over? A dot and a dot, a dot and a dot, a dot and a dot, a dot and a dot. Those are your blood vessels. This is where the main arterial blood supply comes in. These two, and it feeds all of these with blood. 
this is where I believe the artery was. Um, I'm sorry, these are veins, I believe these are arteries. And I believe this could be an artery or a vein, I'm not sure. But it's some form of a blood supply here that leaked out and turned black. I would say probably a vein, but who knows. But that's a foot. If you can't tell that's a foot, I don't know what you're thinking about. And everything I looked at at Stonehenge is biological. It could very easily be tested. No question whatsoever can be done in a couple matter of days. See, this is, this is a tendon right here. That's the ball that anchors in. There used to be something right about to here. And that came down. And that guy's walking on a tendon strap. This one here, you see the little hole in the center? They all have a tiny little hole in the center. That one probably came right down to here. I showed you mine, how one sits right on top of another, and they slide back and forth. They're all over the place. This was a, in a tendon mat. Let me show you the mats. What I just showed you was a tendon mat with one of those balls hanging over, and everything else eroded away. Now that is supposed to be embedded into this flesh, and it was pulled out. That's an injury. These little bob jobbers right here, attached to the straps, this is just the best tendon you can get. When they laid flat, they cut them and made walls out of them and just broke these tabs off. And that's where the bumps are on the walls down in Peru and so forth. All they are is tendons broken right off here and just left broken off. They, you know, they rounded them off nice, but they, that's all they are. See, these are just little, little bumps. The easier for them just to clean them off and clean them up on the end. Now, they cut these when they were wet and just piled them up and, and then they just settled them in like they were putty almost. Now, they had equipment here. Nobody can deny this. They cut these when they were wet. And they cut these slabs and they brought them over the other side of the mountain and made walls out of them. This looks like it was dropped from the sky. I don't know how they drove it here getting through here and coming for either one way or the other it looks like they anchored it up here with a slab coming down so that it wouldn't come down the hill and they had like tank treads on it and then these wheels or maybe that was just an anchor so that it wouldn't go this way and that way i have no idea but they got it here somehow it looks like it came out of the sky to me all right you saw they cut them when they were wet they brought them down here wet and put them there this one here still had some bone left in it. Right there is bone. This looks like flesh. The best is tendon. Now that one's kind of nasty. The one up here, there was one over next to here up in the top that was just like rotten flesh. But that's what this is right here. It's rotting away. The tendon almost never goes bad. It never required any blood hardly at all. There's almost no blood whatsoever in tendons. So they, they just are solid fibers. And when they cut them wet, as we know they did, there's no question about what that whatsoever. When they put them here, they were just like slabs of putty. And those little bumps, they just knocked them over. Some of them don't have any bumps because they weren't in that type of tendon. All kinds of different tendons in your body. This, to me, looks like they were testing to see the best way to deal with these bumps. This one was scraped right down flat. This one, they left the bumps pretty much hanging off. This one, this, this fabric is literally what's on your skin. That's that fabric of the skin. Well, not skin. It's the tendinous, blocky tendinous material that weaves its way up so they they were it looks to me like they were scraping this one down this one they did i don't know what they did but why would they make that wall like that then? to me i can't see any other reason if that wall was like that intact when they found it there and nobody put it up there and put concrete in there i don't know that could be but these are all different types of ways of dealing with the tendons and maybe they wanted to just see what would happen if they let them dry out in certain different conditions. I have no idea, but I find that very interesting. All right, here's what they did, was they cut those tendons. We saw they drove up on those, cut those tendons, and made these walls. 
when they were wet. That's why they fit together so perfectly. Why they did it, I have no idea. That's what we were just looking at, Achilles tendon. They were driving up on there, sinking into it, cutting slabs out, carrying them down, building walls. Ugh. That's what happened. So here's a kid sliding on tendons. Here's the tendons right there. Somebody smoothed those out and turned them into little slides. They walk up and they slide down the hill. There's blood. This is blood on the side of these tendons. They're, they're tendons. Okay, so I don't, I don't see any reason to just continue on babbling. This is the walls. These are the slabs. This is the tendon. We saw the tracks. They drove up here and cut those slabs. Somehow they transported them over here and put them up like blocks of wet cement. And they just all fit together very nicely. They were very, very skilled craftsmen. All right, so Roger Spur of Mud Fossil University, and I need some thumbs up. And spread the word, and open discussion is welcome. We would like to have some, some people from academia, some of the experts, to discuss this with us and how these things happen and what this is all about. It's been avoided much too long, all right? Thank you. I love you all.